Hey beautiful people, all praises to the most high. So this video is about love covers all sins and how to repent properly. So in Proverbs 10 and 12 it tells us, Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all sins. So that's why you know in John 15 and 17 it tells us, These things I commanded you, that you love one another. So that's also a commandment. But if we love one another, we'll forgive each other. We'll be merciful to each other and we'll live righteously with one another so that's why love covers all sins and it's also a commandment so obviously with this being said god would want all of us to turn from hatred and follow his commandment of love loving one another because if we love one another love covers all sins we'll have we'll be without you know it will, it will cover all our sins and we can make it into his kingdom um, 1 Peter 4 and 8, another thing that covers a multitude of sins, but love covers all sins, but charity covers a multitude of sins. Now, 1 Peter 4 and 8, and above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover a multitude of sins. So how can you take sins away? How can God take sins away from you? From from being charitable, for, from, for charity, and from love. Um, James 5 and 20. Here's another thing that'll take away a multitude of your sins. Let him know that he which covers the sin, the sinner from error of his ways, shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. So when you save a soul from death, you hide a multitude of sins. When you when you're charitable, charity for a cover for, to cover a multitude of sins, but love covers all sins that's proverbs 10 and 12 now hebrews 8 and 12 for i will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will i remember no more that's what god's telling you when you repent to him so hebrews 10 and 17 and their sins and iniquities will i remember no more when you seek his face and repent to him we're going to get to those scriptures too but this is what God wants from you. This is what he wants. Isaiah 43 and 25. I, even I, am he that bloats out thy transgressions for my, for my own sake and will not remember thy sins. Put me in remembrance. What he told you to do? Put him in remembrance. Let us plead together. Go plead with your God. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Say something to him. Now, what will he do to you for you when you repent? Isaiah 1 and 16, what he wants to do. He says, wash you, make you clean. He's telling you what to do. These are things required of repentance. Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. So in your repentance, put in away evil from before the most high's eyes and cease to do evil. Wash, make yourself clean. Cease from doing evil. Charity love now I see a 1 and 7 learn to do well so he goes to tell you what to do turn from your evil cease to do evil learn to do well so this is what you're supposed to be doing in your repentance learning to do well seek judgment relieve the oppressed judge the fatherless plead for the widow Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Now Isaiah 1 and 25. And I will turn my hand upon thee and will pur purely purge away thy dross and take away all thy tin. Ezekiel 33 and 11. Say unto them, as I live, says the Lord. God, I have no pleasure in that, in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his wicked way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? So God wants you to turn from your wicked ways. He delights that none should die. He wants you to, to, to what? Learn to do well. Cease from doing evil. Learn judgment. Now, this is a, not this is a part of repentance of seeking him because uh, after a three-day fast god will forgive you and you'll live in his sight on the third day 
So when for you repenting to God, you ought to go on a three day fast. They don't teach that much though. They don't teach that much. And it, according to your three day fast, in your three day fast, you should be doing those things. And not just in that three days, you should continue your life doing it. Now, Hosea 6 and 1, come now, let us return unto the Lord. So this is what you do in your repentance. You return to God by seeking his face. For he has torn and he will heal us. When you're repenting, he will heal you. That's why he says, I'll heal their backsliding. He has smitten and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. So on your second day of fasting, you're going to feel God's presence. You're going to feel revived. In the third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. That's what this means. You go on a three-day fast to the Father. I, Hosea 5 and 15. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face in their affliction they will seek me early. So what God said, he's going to be in his place until you acknowledge your offense that you sinned against him and you seek his face. And how do you do it? He told you after two days, he will revive us. And the third day, he will raise us up and we will stand in, and live in, his, shall live in his sight. Right? Now, Daniel 9 and 3. And I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplication this is what you're doing in your fasting and your praying and in your repentance. You see God by prayer and supplication with fasting and with sackcloth and ashes. 1 John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He told you he'll remember your sins no more. Go on a three-day fast. Ezekiel 18 and 21. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he has committed and will keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. And his transgressions that he has committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he has done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die says the lord god and not that he should return from his ways and live god has no delight that wicked should die but that they turn from their sins he tells you that in ezekiel 33 and 11 i have no pleasure in the death of the wicked but that the wicked turn from his way and live turn ye turn ye from your evil ways then he tells you to turn from your evil ways for a while will you die Now, Matthew 26 and 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed of for many for the remissions of sins. Now, these are good scriptures of prayer um, to help with repentance. Psalms 86 and 5. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all that call upon thee. When you call upon him and you seek his face, he's merciful enough to forgive you. Now, Psalms 25 and Psalms 51 are good prayers for forgiveness and the Lord's Prayer. Now, Psalms 25 and 7, I'm just going to read um, one scripture from Psalms 25 and one scripture from Psalms 51. But if you need to repent before God, those are good prayers to read. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness' sake, O Lord. Now, Psalms 51 and 9, hide thy face from my sins and bloat out all my iniquities. Psalms 51 is so good for cleaning, purging. It's a good prayer of repentance and getting clean before God. Jeremiah 29 and 13, and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Remember, God is a spirit, so those who um, seek him, who worship him, worship him in spirit and, spirit and truth. So fasting, you're in the spirit, right? So you'll find him. Now Luke 11 and 4. And forgive us our sins. This is the Lord's prayer. And forgive us our sins for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. Forgiveness is a part of repentance. So when you come to God to forgive you, you have to forgive your enemy. You have to forgive the people who hurt you. 
I hate the saying where they say hurt people hurt people. No, hurt people don't hurt people. Unhealed people hurt people because there is many people who are hurt and they don't go back to hurt the person who hurt them. They heal their self and they build their self up and they move on. There's two, that is another foolish stereotype to keep people stuck in bad behavior, stuck in bad ways, and to not improve their self, to become whole. That's a broken person. That is an unhealed person who go about hurting people who hurt them. Hurt and broken people hurt people. Okay, unhealed people go about hurting people. Just because you're hurt doesn't mean you're going to hurt someone. Unhealed people hurt people. Broken people hurt people. People who are hurt, it's either you heal yourself and move on, or you don't heal and you go about hurting other people. That is a stereotype of folly. Hurt people don't hurt people. Unhealed people hurt people, okay? That's why when you go to God, he'll heal you. And you won't be hurting people. But a lot of people haven't went to God to heal them. So they just go about hurting God's creation. Luke 11 and 4. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 1 Chronicles 16 and 11. Seek ye the Lord and his strength. So when you seek God, you get his strength. Seek his face continually. When you seek God continually, you'll be wise. You'll have understanding. Psalms 105 and 4. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. And this is the end of that, this video. I just want to say, hurt people don't hurt people. Unhealed people hurt people. Broken people hurt people. And people who don't want to take accountability to see where their emotions and their feelings are coming from hurt people. You have a blessed day, and I hope this blessed you on how to get to steps of repentance by forgiving, by seeking God's face, by prayer, by fasting, by supplication, and um, basically, yeah. And I hope this blessed you, and I hope God keeps you and guides you into all the things that you need to be taught. Stay blessed.